You're listening to Tim Bolte's 5-Minute Bible. About the Prosperity Gospel, Part 2, Love. In the first part, I claim that the preachers of the so-called Prosperity Gospel deny the sovereignty of the grace of God. In Part 2, I want to claim that the criterion of love also fails. I want to begin, though, with money. Because one of the striking features of at least the TV presentations of the prosperity gospel are that it's about money. The pitch always ends with make your donation, or if it's not at the end, it's at some suitable high point in the middle. Now, any preacher worth his or her salt knows that when you have to defend being paid to preach, or asking for donations, then you turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 9 and following. For it is written in the law of Moses, do not muzzle an ox while it's treading the grain. Is it about oxen that God is concerned? Surely he says this for us, doesn't he? Yes, this was written for us, because when the plowman plows and the thresher threshes, they ought to do so in the hope of sharing in the harvest. If we have sown spiritual seed among you, is it too much if we reap a material harvest from you? If others have this right of support from you, shouldn't we have it all the more? But we did not use this right. On the contrary, we put up with anything rather than hinder the gospel of Christ. You see, it's fine if you stop at the bit about oxen. If you read on, Paul's whole point is that although it's perfectly right that somebody should be paid for what they do and that a preacher needs to live, he actually hasn't exercised that right. And it looks a bit similar when you consider Jesus. It's a great principle that the worker is worthy of his hire, but Jesus never asked for support from his hearers. Oh, there were a number of women who supported him, supported his ministry out of their own means but he never asked and on another occasion for example as they were walking down the road a man said to him I will follow you wherever you go Jesus replied foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head little support from either Jesus or Paul for asking for money for your ministry. But let's consider the circumstances too. They're different. Back in the time of Jesus and Paul, if you gathered a crowd of a few hundred, you had to yell your lungs off to make yourself heard. Nowadays, with all our modern technology, we can have auditoriums big enough to seat thousands and still be heard. And we broadcast our message over the TV, and we reach at least thousands more. And we stick the video on YouTube, and if we're a popular preacher, we reach thousands more. Now, if each of those thousands donated one dollar, the preacher would be rich as Croesus. And then there's the phenomena of celebrity preaching. Most of those who are known for the so-called prosperity gospel are celebrity preachers. Celebrity preachers, you can recognise them. They have... New York Times bestsellers. Even if, like Mark Driscoll, they've had to buy that status. And they have product for sale. Books, DVDs and all the rest. And sometimes you wonder whether what they are giving away is the gospel or whether they're selling their product. And then ask yourself what they're saying. Not just with the words, but with the whole presentation. Are they saying, be like Jesus? Or are they saying, you can be like me, (laughs) rich and famous? Or are they actually saying, gimme, I want? What's the real message? Okay, what's love got to do with it? You've talked a lot about economics. C.S. Lewis distinguished four kinds of love in the Bible. But for our purposes, we're only interested in two. The big difference between love as giving and love as desire or taking. 
You see, if the prosperity gospel denies the sovereignty of the grace of God, I think it also fails to show love in all sorts of ways, not the least of which is its claim that the poor are faithless. For if wealth and all sorts of other good things, prosperity, comes from God to the faithful, the implication is that if you don't have those things, you are faithless. And that, my friends, is a lie. 